Welcome back to Microbiology Lab. My name is Kevin Tilkoff. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel. In this video, we're going to discuss a little bit of the theory behind the McConkie agar, and then also how to interpret the results on the next slide. All right, so first of all, what is McConkie agar? So this is, first of all, both a selective and differential medium. So it's selective in the sense that it selects for the growth of gram-negative organisms. So if you have growth, such as on either side of this McConkie agar plate right here, anytime you have growth on McConkie agar, that's going to indicate that you have a gram-negative organism. So these are gram-negative organisms. McConkie agar inhibits the growth of gram-positive organisms. They don't grow on this. And the reason behind this, you'll see this in your lab manual, there are substances embedded in the agar itself called bile salts along with crystal violet. And both of these substances collectively act to inhibit the growth of gram-positive organisms. So if you plated a gram-positive organism on here, you wouldn't see any of these colonies growing. There'd be nothing, okay? You might see the little, you know, little bit of tear from your loop when you scrape it over the agar itself, but you won't see any growth if it's gram-positive. And that's how this agar is selective. But one of the major things that we also care about is that it's also differential. Now, the differential nature of McConkie agar has to do with also embedded in here is the disaccharide, a carbohydrate called lactose. Now, not really getting into all of this, it suffices to say that some bacteria are going to be able to metabolize lactose and ultimately ferment that lactose into um, acid end products, uh, the major one of which would be lactic acid. But the whole point is some of these bacteria will be able to ferment lactose into acid end products such as lactic acid. And so the differential nature of this is going to be that some bacteria will be able to ferment lactose, those would be considered lactose positive, and then some bacteria will not be able to ferment lactose, those would be lactose negative. All right, so let's now get into a detailed discussion about how we actually interpret the results. All right, so basically the first thing we're going to need to determine is whether or not there's growth. Now this is probably the easiest thing. Um, if you have no growth, meaning the plate is actually growth negative, that means that your organism is automatically gram positive. Okay, um, And so you would not see any of these colonies growing on the plate. You may see the, a little bit of a, you know, a line or a tear, uh, if you plate it a little too hard, where your loop went over the agar, but no colony should be growing on that. And if you have no growth, your organism is gram positive. Now, in the case where your organism is gram positive, you have no growth in the first place, so you would not be able to tell what the lactose reaction is, okay? Whether or not it's lactose positive or negative. So there's two things you always report. You report the gram reaction. If it's gram positive, okay? And then if it's gram positive for lactose, you would say lactose unknown or lactose inconclusive or something that indicates that you cannot tell the lactose reaction because there's no growth in the first place. Okay. Now, the interesting part is when you do have growth. And on this plate right here, we'll actually look at something very similar on the next slide. On the left side of the plate, we actually have one kind of organism. This will actually turn out to be lactose positive on the left. On the right here, this will actually turn out to be lactose negative. And depending on whether it's lactose positive or negative, it actually changes the color. So in general, on both sides of the plate here, we have growth, meaning these bacteria would first of all be growth positive, but that indicates that they're gram negative. And remember, that's because McConkie agar selects only for organisms that are gram negative, and it inhibits the growth of gram positive. And so now that you've determined your bacteria is gram negative because there's growth, you now have to determine the lactose reaction, whether it's lactose positive or lactose negative. That's what we'll look at right here. So I kind of like this this picture a little better over here on the right. So this is the same picture from the previous slide. On the left, we have colonies that are at least around where the bacteria are. It's turned pink. And over here on the right, it's mainly a tannish yellow color. I would call it more tan. Now, if you've determined this growth, it's gram negative. So then you look at the color. That's the second thing you look at. So if the area around the smear is pink, now the whole plate does not have to be pink. We look at the bacteria over here, um, we have two pink ones right here. This one turned pink only very close to the smear. This one, it kind of spread out a little bit from the smear, but if there's any pink around the smear itself, pink is lactose positive. 
okay? So clearly over here on the left side where my mouse is, okay, these bacteria, there was growth, so it's gram negative, they're opposites, growth positive, gram negative, and then it's pink, so it's lactose positive. So if you wanted to fully report the results here on the left, you would have to say gram negative, lactose positive. And that's just because there's clearly growth and it's pink around the smear. All right. But now let's look over here on the right side. Here it's more of a tan color. We can see here these are non-lactose fermenting colonies. These do not ferment lactose, and that's because they're tan. But there's clearly growth here. So they're still gram negative, okay? So gram negative, but because it's tan around the smears, tan around the colonies, we would consider these bacteria to be lactose negative, okay? And remember, back from the beginning, at least the first slide here, lactose is being, or potentially is being fermented into lactic acid, which is an acid. Also, I didn't mention this earlier, but embedded in the agar itself, we have a pH indicator. That pH indicator actually happens to be usually neutral red. And these kinds of pH indicators, when the agar becomes more acidic, meaning the pH becomes lowered, then it turns a reddish pink color. Okay, That's what neutral red does. So the reason why, if you have a lactose positive organism, it turns pinkish red is because for lactose positive organisms, they're able to ferment lactose, meaning they're able to convert lactose ultimately through glycolysis into lactic acid, which is an acid. Therefore, it lowers the pH and turns the pH indicator red. In the case of over here on the right, these do not ferment lactose, so the agar does not turn red. It instead is, at least relatively speaking, more alkaline, and so it maintains this tan color. Okay, so in the end, let's kind of regroup here and talk about what we have to do with McConkey agar. The first thing we do is determine if there's growth or not, which indicates the gram reaction. Okay, if there's no growth, no colonies, it's gram positive. Okay, so growth negative, gram positive. And in the case of gram positive, it's going to be lactose inconclusive. Okay, or lactose unknown. We can't tell the lactose reaction in that case. But if there is growth, growth positive, then those organisms are gram negative. And then we have to do the second thing, if it's gram negative, where we look at the color of the agar to determine the lactose reaction, positive or negative. So if it's gram negative, and only if it's gram negative, we say, is it pink around the colonies or tan? If it's pink, it's going to be lactose positive, so gram negative, lactose positive. But if it's tan around the colonies, then it's going to still be gram negative, but lactose negative. Okay, and that's pretty much all there is to the conky agar test. It's really kind of a two-step process interpreting. Is there growth? If no, it's gram positive. If yes, gram negative. And then you look at the color to determine the lactose reaction. All right, so hopefully this video made sense to you. Um, please comment, please like, and subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much. In the next video, we're going to discuss the carbohydrate fermentation tests in the Durham tube. Thank you.